comes as yesterday the Times published a story, not from the editorial side, but from the news side, about Dr. Kevin Kennard, an expert on Parkinson's disease who visited the White House eight times over the course of eight months. The reporting does not, however, elaborate on why he was at the White House. It's honestly amazing that people still watch Joy Reid. Folks, before we start the show, hit the like button on the video, the follow button on the channel, the sub button if you're over on YouTube. And if you are over on YouTube, hit that join button for $5 a month. You can help support alternative media and get, get access to some extra perks we have over here at AP Unfiltered. But without further ado, let's get into the video. From Media, Joy Reid slams LA Times laser-focused Biden reporting like whip up to the Iraq war. MSNBC host Joy Reid slammed the New York Times for its laser focus reporting on President Joe Biden's mental fitness for office with no focus on the fact that former, Donald, former President Donald Trump has been showing signs of cognitive decline for years. You know where this is going. Once again, this is media reporting and it's, they're quoting Joy Reid. The host dedicated an entire segment of her Tuesday night show, The Read Out, which nobody really watches anymore, I don't think to attacking the newspaper for continuing to report on public concerns around the president's age and health following his presidential debate performance, despite the fact she claims that, quote, the majority are still publicly standing by Biden and the president's instance that it's time to put Trump in the bullseye. Let's take a look. With just 119 days until the election, there is still a lot of chatter here in Washington over President Biden's future. Today, Democrats in the Senate and House held separate meetings to discuss internal divisions and the best path, path forward. But ultimately, it appears that the majority are still publicly standing by Biden or starting to accept the fact that he's not going anywhere, at least for now. In the meantime, the president is trying to turn the page, telling donors, quote, we're done talking about the debate. It's time to put Trump in the bullseye, unquote, which is easier said than done when stories about Biden's age and calls for him to step down are all over the news, especially in The New York Times, whose editorial board today again called on Biden to step aside and urged the Democratic leadership to publicly demand that he leave the race. Important to note here that The New York Times has never called on Trump to step aside or for his resignation, not when his administration was tearing migrant babies from their mother's arms, or when he suggested people inject bleach into their bodies to combat a raging pandemic, or when he incited a violent insurrection at the nation's capital with the goal of overturning an election so he could just stay in office forever. Okay, setting aside the fact that all the claims that she made there are just patently false. It was Obama who put kids in cages. He never said inject bleach. And no one was even charged with said insurrection. Nobody at the Capitol was charged with insurrection, and neither was Donald Trump. Every claim that they make is patently false and crazy. She's just mad that the New York Times isn't towing the exact line that they have been this entire time and covering for the Biden administration hand and foot. So how dare the New York Times question Joe Biden? He's sharp as attack, as we've been told. What they should be doing, she's saying, is questioning Donald Trump. <laughs> like, come on, Joy. Really? It's, it's all baked into the cake at this point. I'm telling you this right now. From what I'm hearing and from what everybody is seeing, the people who have claimed and, and, and are standing by and are voting for Donald Trump are voting for Trump. It doesn't matter if he's thrown in jail. That would probably actually help him with moderates and independents. It doesn't matter if some scandal comes out from 180,000 years ago. They don't care. It's the Biden voters, the people who are planning on voting for Joe Biden, who saw him on Thursday. Those voters are the ones who are now up for grabs because of the situation the Democratic Party, the Democratic media, and the powers behind the scenes have put themselves in. So please, don't come crying to me about how the New York Times isn't fairly covering the president. Because that's what you're really doing, and you look absolutely ridiculous doing it. It also comes, as yesterday, the Times published a story not from the editorial side, but from the news side, about Dr. Kevin Kennard, an expert on Parkinson's disease who visited the White House eight times over the course of eight months. The reporting does not, however, elaborate on why he was at the White House or if the president was even there when he visited, which according to NBC News, most of the time, he wasn't. Biden was only at the White House for a few of those dates. For most of them, he was traveling to Maine, Tahoe, Philadelphia, San Francisco, and New York. This is verifiable information that the Times apparently didn't bother to check before posting a story heavily implying that the president suffers from Parkinson's disease. They also apparently ignored the fact that the president around that same time period was launching an administrative initiative 
to combat Parkinson's disease, something that was also public knowledge. Okay, I'm calling a timeout. Timeout here. She is gaslighting you. And I'm going to break this down for you like I would talk to my nephew. She's gaslighting here. We all saw the debate and Joe Biden's performance and his steady decline over the last few years. Then we realize that there's been a Parkinson specialist going to the White House and we notice it. And finally, Joy Reid on the back end of that comes out and calls us the crazy ones for noticing it. And it, what's even funnier about this is she's angry at the New York Times for noticing this. That is the definition of gaslighting, noticing something and then getting called crazy for noticing it. Is Joy Reid okay these days, ladies and gentlemen? Here she is making another statement that is completely off base. And this is actually a hot topic right now, so I wanna clear this up, take a look. All that matters in this election, the only thing that matters in this election is keeping Donald Trump and Project 2025 out of power. Keeping that in, in, insane ideology of white Christian nationalism and white supremacy and white male Christian dominance out of power. Not to mention that Judeo-Christian values did found America, so maybe check your history on that one, Joy. And the fear-mongering about white Christian nationalist males, like, look at, the de look at the minorities that are now backing Trump. But I think she missed the memo here because Trump literally put out this statement regarding Project 25, which, spoiler alert, Democrats, he doesn't support. From the true social account of Donald J. Trump, I know nothing about Project 2025. I have no idea who is behind it. I disagree with some of the things they're saying, and some of the things they're saying are absolutely ridiculous and abysmal. Anything they do, I wish them luck, but I have nothing to do with them. And look where this is from. This is from Axios. This is not Breitbart, Gateway, Fox. This is not from any of them. This is Axios literally putting this statement out saying he has disavowed the Heritage Foundation's Project 2025, which has sparked widespread news coverage about policy plans for a potential second Trump administration. It's Agenda 47. Look that up. Not Project 2025. So Joy Reid, The View, MSN, DNC, and all of these other fear mongers who are trying to gaslight you into voting for a literal corpse in Joe Biden. They're wrong. They are they they are blatantly wrong. They know it, but they're not. But they're going to continue to run with 2025 and not look at these things. So I got to give credit where it's due, though. Axios actually came through with something that was true for once. Because the crazy thing is, Donald Trump isn't even behind Project 2025. That is the Heritage Foundation, like it said. Sure, in in his truth in his truth post, he said he wishes them luck in it, but he also called them absolutely ridiculous and abysmal. So once again, if anybody ever brings up Project 2025 in relation to saying this is what Trump's standing on, this is what he's running against, please refer them to Agenda 47 because that is Trump's official policy, not this Project 2025, which is not Donald Trump's positions. But Joy Reid isn't the only person running cover for the Biden administration and calling you crazy for noticing it. Here's Karine Jean-Pierre doing just that. We provide to all of you. It's a very basic, direct question. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a second. Eight wait. times, or at least once, in regards to I the just, president wait. specifically. Hold on a second. That much you should be able to answer by this point. Wait, no, 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 no. No, wait a minute. Come, Ed, please. A little respect here, please. So every year around the, the president's physical examination, he sees a neurologist. That's three times, right? So I am telling you that he has seen a neurologist three times while he has been in this presidency. That's what I'm saying. I am telling you that he has seen them three times. That is what I'm sharing with you, right? So every time he has a physical, he has had to see a neurologist. So. That is answering that question. No, it's not. No, it is. It is. is. You're Dr. asking Kevin me. Kennard, come I to the White House. But I just, and I also said to you, conditions. Ed, I also said to you, for security reasons, we cannot share names. We cannot share names. We have to. We have to. Others he would have met with. We but cannot he can share names no, 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 in regards no, no. to if we, someone came here no, in regards we to cannot the share. We cannot share names of specialists broadly, it, from a dermatologist to a neurologist. We cannot share names. There are security reasons. No, we have to, we have to protect. I understand I that. I, un I, I hear it's you. It's right I, there for anyone to see. Ed, I hear you. I cannot from here confirm any of that because we have to keep their privacy. 
So let's back up here for a second. They say they can't talk about who was there, but yet the press corps is saying this guy Cunard was there, who's a Parkinson specialist, but then they cannot confirm or deny that Biden had met with this person, but the name is out there, so they can't talk about the names? I'm very confused here. What is the messaging from the White House press secretary surrounding this? Because everybody with two brain cells to rub together that aren't out there doing something crazy understand the president's in doc cognitive decline. So if there is a Parkinson specialist there, maybe it was for the president, but then she can't answer because of privacy. But then the press corps already knows the name. Like, I, <laughs> if this was Donald Trump, could you imagine the, the absolute bleep storm that would be raining down about this? Do you understand, like, the way that this is treated differently? And as you can see here, the press is turning on the administration. Now, people speculate whether it's genuine or they're just upset that the administration essentially pants the entire media after the after the debate when they'd been because the media had been running cover for Biden, saying he's tart, sharp as attack. He's cogent. My favorite line from from uh, uh, what's his name? Joe Scarborough over on MSNBC. But nonetheless, they are fed up with these runaround answers and most of the time just blatant non answers from uh, from Karine Jean-Pierre. The Biden administration has done this the entire time they've been in office. There is no transparency with the American people. Biden hasn't come in the press room and fielded questions anytime recently. Do you remember when he first started, he was accused of, oh, there were, or it was fact actually, that the people who were in the room had questions and then he had to call on them in a specific order. He couldn't even do that now. He hasn't even been in there recently. And, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I genuinely imagine him stepping out on stage like Karine Jean-Pierre is, to a room full of the press and having to answer these questions directly from them. Oh, my Lord. It would be like Comedy Central at 3 a.m. Not to mention, he refuses to take a cognitive touch, test, which, think about this, too. If you were Democrats, wouldn't you want him to take the test? You would want him to take it if you were confident in his mental abilities. That way you could then claim to Democratic voters and independents and the moderates because you do need to win independents and moderates regardless of what anybody else says and the party at large. You could assuage their fears. But instead, they're sending out KJP time and time again to face the press and she's getting bodied by them over and over. All while trying to tell you that there's absolutely nothing wrong and how dare you for noticing something, you right-wing extremist, you domestic terrorist Macedonian which is basically the messaging from the Democrats over the last four years with regard to every single issue. But let's get back to Joy Reid, the gift that keeps on giving. Meanwhile, overnight, the White House physician released a letter saying that Biden has not seen a neurologist outside his annual physical, something he would probably highly likely do if he indeed had Parkinson's. The White House physician also explains that Dr. Kennard has been the neurology consultant to the White House Medical Unit since 2012, and that before the pandemic, Kennard held regular neurology clinics at the White House for the thousands of active duty military members assigned there. And yet, the Times isn't letting up. They seem laser focused on Biden's age and acuity with no headlines on the fact that Donald Trump has been showing serious signs of cognitive decline for years. And we do not know anything from any of his doctors. It's it's such an absolute joke. It's this is it's Looney Tunes. It's Looney Tune world. It's like cartoon land on steroids. On top of on top of everything, on top of gaslighting you, telling you that you're crazy for noticing Biden's decline. And then she gets irate at The New York Times. She's then now saying that Trump is the one who's in mental decline. Is anyone buying this? Who hasn't been suffering from Trump, Trump derangement syndrome this entire time? I don't think so. Do you know anybody? Drop a comment down below with your thoughts. And by the way, anybody out there who genuinely thinks Trump is in decline, watch a video of him from 2020 to now, and then watch one from Biden on the campaign trail when he was still campaigning and not calling a lid on his campaign every 30 seconds to now. Tell me if you see a difference and in which candidate. Well, listen, folks, this is all I got for you today. If you appreciate this type of content and you feel like I've earned it, hit the like button on the video, the follow button on the channel, the sub button for over on YouTube, share the show with a friend. If you'd like to become a member and help us support our efforts here and help us keep the lights on and continue to bring you guys content like this and fighting the culture war from a different perspective, hit the join button over on YouTube for $5 a month. There's three tiers, five, seven, and 20. The $20 Discord, uh, uh, the $20 one gets you access to a Discord as well as personal calls with me. You ask me questions. We could chat about different ongoing things in politics. I appreciate you guys being here. Staying informed is an American immoral obligation. Until next time, catch y'all on the next one.